I invite the next group to join us today with such an interesting topic about study on the mechanism of Wishu Bauer formula in treating polycystic ovarian syndrome insulin resistance. Presented by Mr. J. Wang. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jay, and I feel so privileged to be invited by the IMRC committee as a president of our group. I'm so excited to demonstrate our new discovery on the mechanism and treatment of polycystic ovarian syndrome, complicated with insulin resistance, also abbreviated as PICOSIR. A first part for the background, there are some distinctive symptoms about PICOS and they are reduced the frequency of menstruation or amenorrhea, hyperandrogenemia, ovary and polycystic change, and insulin resistance. Those symptoms do frustrate the female population and even it could even lead to uh, infertility. PICOS is a chronic inflammatory disease, but the underlying mechanism is still unclear. Then we conceive that the PICOS inflammatory syndrome is triggered by the hyperptosis, and we designed the procedural experiments to verify our hypothesis. For the method, we assumed the, high, uh, the inflammation caused by the PICOS symptoms. Before set a series of animal experiments, we tested some patients with PICOS uh, for the inflammatory cytokines. And it turned out those cytokines, especially the NLRP1, significantly increased in the PICOS patient's body. So we concluded that the pyperitosis of orient tissue perhaps caused the inflammation. And then to dis establish a PQC rat model, we fed the rats with high fat diet with letrozole. And those tested cytokines compared with the control group showed that the model was successfully built. And the inflammatory cytokines got tested among the rats model, which showed the level of IL-1, uh, IL-1 beta and IL-18 significantly increased. So we concluded that the inflammation did exist in the uh, rats. And for the NLR, NLR MRA test, it showed the increased level of NLRP1 MRA. And it's interesting because both in human and the rats, the level of NLRP1 increased. So the NLP1 may be the core factor. So how the NLRP1 gets activated? And then we tested some corresponding pyperitosis cytokines. And there was a distinct uh, result about the increasing level of TL TLR4, which is the indispensable receptor of LPS. Then the chain of conduction got clarified. That is the combining of LPS and TLR4 activates the NLRP1 and the downstream corresponding factors, which causes the ovarian pyperitosis and inflammation. And there's another question, where is the LPS from and how it gets absorbed? LPS is the main component of cell wall in uh, grain active bacteria, which naturally exists in the human intestine and the LPS normally couldn't be absorbed into the blood unless the level of intestine fibronectin decreases. So we conducted a research about if there are any intestinal bacteria changes the permeability of the intestine wall. After we analyzed the intestinal myobiota between the pico group and the control group, we found that there was a manifested grouping difference. And there were eight different bacteria genesis, uh, which level increased. And among them, the bacteria for calibatulus level increased the most. And the further research also showed that LPS level is positively correlated with the uh, for calibatulus level. So we could conclude that the picocere is resulted by the intestinal bacteria disorder, which changes the permeability of intestine wall and increases the level of blood LPS. 
And for the treatment, there is a Yishibawi formula, uh, also known as BWF, which is the prescription formulated through the uh, traditional Chinese medical experience for the treatment of pickle seer, and which is applied by the Shanghai famous traditional Chinese medical professor Yu Chaoxin, and it contains Zhao Jiao Si, Shi Chang Pu, Cang Shu, and etc. And then we applied the BWF to the pickle seer model and compared with the pickle seer group. The typical symptoms and the cytokines got effectively reduced. So how could the BWF alleviate the symptoms? Then we analyzed the, the picocere group applied with the BWF and showed the relative abundance of, uh, of calibaculin reduced. And then we tested the, uh, the relative level of corresponding intestine fibronectins and uh, blood PS. It showed that uh, it showed that the fibronectin increased and the blood PS reduced. And what's more, the inflammatory cytokines test also showed that TRR4 uh, in uh, IL-1 beta and IL-1-18 reduced. So to sum up, the mechanism of BWF in treating with the pico seer is by improving the intestinal bacteria, which improves the permeability of intestine wall and to avoid the LPS absorption. Then it avoids the chain reaction to the pico seer symptoms caused by the LPS. And last part is for a limitation. Uh, because of some financial issues and some time constraints, we didn't apply the NLRP1 inhibitor or silence the NLRP1 gene to test the specificity of NLRP1. And we didn't conduct a research on what's the effective ingredient of BWF. So further, we'll conduct more research on it. And that's all of our presentation today. And thank you for your attention. Learned so much today. Any comments from our judges? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I have uh, one comment. So in your conclusion, um, you said that the uh, alterations of uh, microbiota is a cause uh, to, for um, polycystic ovary treatment, right? So you apply the drug and then uh, microbiota is changed and then the ovary got treated, right? So my question is uh, how you exclude the possibilities that the gut microbiota maybe the effect of uh, ovarian treated, you know? So uh, my, my question is, uh, the, is it possible that the gut microbiota alteration is the effect of um, the ovary, the, the polycystic ovary uh, therapeutic? Oh, okay. Uh, thank you for your question. And uh, just so as you mentioned, the microbiota, uh, yeah, we, we did uh, do research on the change of microbiota, uh, if there are effects on the symptoms. And uh, the, core fact, the core component of, the, of those uh, microbiota we uh, is doing research about is the LPS. So uh, we think LPS is the uh, core um, ingredient, we are just doing research on it. So uh, we improve the microbiota, maybe just a, a way to improve the, uh, the absorption of the LPS into the intestine. So that's it. In terms of materials and methods, it seems that you stick to Western blots, Western blots for all the whole experiment. Do you use any other techniques to confirm your results? Oh, sorry, uh, I didn't. Uh, pardon, I didn't uh, hear it well because the connection is kind of bad. It seems Could you that just it again? yes, for the matter in terms of materials and methods, it seems that you use Western blood throughout for you the whole of your experiment. Have you used any other techniques to confirm 
the results from recent blood? Uh, well, we, we didn't apply any other things to to come to confirm the uh, the effective ingredients. So that's the that's kind of like a, the uh, what I'm what are we gonna do to uh, confer and to do more switch on this. So as I mentioned, the, the, this candidate is part of a limitation. Um, we will just try it later. And thank you for your suggestion. Yes, I would suggest at least two of up techniques to confirm each other. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, I'm wondering about the conclusion of the LPS that it, uh, because you have mentioned in, in the beginning that the, uh, rat, the mouse model, that, the rat model that you have, have more LPS than the, the, between the PCOS and the normal animal. So how can, did you measure the LPS and in which sample? Or how can you conclude that it's uh, exactly the, the LPS itself that is the main factor? Uh, well, uh, LPS, because you know, we, I just mentioned the CLR4, uh, which is the uh, inflammatory cytokines, and it's this indispensable receptor of LPS. So LPS may just trigger the, the activate of the TLR4 and combine the, uh, combine the TLR4 to trigger the uh, downstream inflammatory cytokines to start the inflammation. So uh, that's how we. That's how we just just make the conclusion. Okay. So my suggestion is that maybe you need to look further again because uh, the LPS can be the activator of the TLR4, but it's not the only one because actually the inflammation process can come from uh, something else, like its resistance or other like uh, intrabody inflammation can also lead to this inflammation cytokine, which is not the only LPS. Oh, I see. So that's the part of the limitation. So I just mentioned we didn't uh, test the specificity of, of that. So uh, after that, after we tried uh, to uh, the test the specificity of the uh, NLRP1, so then the, maybe the result will be more clear. So thank you for your suggestion. Okay, thank you so much. This is the end of the oral presentation. We will have a 15 minute break and we'll come back with the poster presentation after that. We have prepared some snacks for you. It can be picked up at the second floor and the Muslim prayer room is on the fifth floor. Thank you so much. <laughs>